So you're 14 years old in Guitar Center, eyeballing the guitars up and down along the wall, barely able to even reach the middle row of guitars. Your dad is over in the amp room, plugged into a Mesa Boogie triple rectifier, and you're just staring at this Dean Razorback hanging on the wall. And with a $299 prize tag, that seems enough in reach. After all, your dad bought you that Ibanez bass a few years ago, and that was pretty close to that price. Dad, can we get an attendant to pull the Razorback down, please? Why do you want that guitar? Because it's a shred guitar. We already have a shred guitar at home. I'm not going to go through the history with you about why Japanese solos are sought after by collectors and stuff. Frankly, I don't know much about it and I don't really care about it. All I really care about is my first hand experience with this guitar. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if it's the springs that are worn out in the tremolo, but it definitely doesn't hold tuning like it does on my original Floyd Rose and my older Kramer, which is whatever. I mean, between me, my dad, and my brother, we've basically tag teamed the shit out of this thing to where it probably needs new springs. The twin Jackson J80C humbuckers are definitely geared toward treble, but forget switching between them in the middle of the song because the switch in each position has about as much grab as like a claw machine at a Six Flags arcade. The neck on the guitar is also that classic Jackson D shape, which I've actually grown out of now that I've had a lot of time playing the Kramer. But Kayla, what makes this a unique first guitar? When I was growing up, this guitar was always just there. My dad bought it before I was born, and he used to play gigs with it in bands that he was in. I think when you have something that's in your home that's always just kind of there, you tend to take it for granted, and that's exactly what I did with this guitar for many years. But in my opinion, the soloist doesn't really inspire that much on its aesthetics alone. It's pretty modest in its looks. It's the kind of guitar you could take to a church worship band and be like, yeah guys, let's worship some Jesus, while also being at the worship band practice the Wednesday before and being like, hey, can we play some Slayer though? It was for that reason that when I was starting on a guitar, I was just really bored with this guitar. I wanted to have something flashy like my heroes played, and when your biggest hero is Dimebag Daryl, I mean, having a guitar that looks like this can be pretty underwhelming. But that was the kicker because I noticed that every guitar I would pick up in Guitar Center and was interested in based off of its looks, it would just feel like crap in comparison. The neck would be too thick, or the body would be like positioned weirdly, or the shape of the neck would throw me off. Nothing really felt quite like the Jackson. And I remember telling this to my dad at one point and he was like, oh well, yeah, it's a Jackson Solos. They're nice guitars. And somewhere along the way of realizing this, I realized that just because a guitar doesn't look like a Shred guitar doesn't make it not a Shred guitar. And as a result of that, I started to appreciate what I had just a little bit more. And I stopped shopping around for guitars just based off of their looks, you know? Plus the guitar that I really wanted was something like the Hammer from Hell. But I wouldn't end up finding anything like that until years later. So I guess I have the Jackson to thank for helping me focus on playing and not just gear shopping all the time and, you know, never advancing my technique. For being a great guitar to begin learning leads and for showing me that the best guitar that I had to start with was the one that was in front of me the whole time.